I'd like to share with you the message that I intended to preach on December 29, 2014. What happened that morning is God spoke to us in a powerful way here at FC3. We were able to pray for people around our altars. We were able to worship God together and close out our year in a very powerful manner. Because of that, though, I wasn't able to share the message that I had written for that morning. I really felt like it's something that you may personally use, something that you may need to hear. I know it's something that I needed to hear and to really study on. I don't know about you, but New Year's brings new uh, resolutions. One of the resolutions is that people really want to take up running. They want to get in shape. They want to do all this stuff. I personally don't enjoy running. I think it's boring. I think it's uh, something that crazy people do. Um, I mean, I'll do it if I have to. It's going to help me get in shape. But really, if I have a choice between running or not running, I'm going to not run every day of the week. When I was in elementary school, I had a, a PE teacher, and he used to always talk to us about how to run correctly. He would show us proper form, proper arm alignment, proper step, you know, everything was proper with him. As we learned how to run, he would always emphasize that when you're running a sprint, it's the last three steps that matter as to whether you come in first place or second place. He would say, you lean in, you put your head out. And if you do these things, you'll take first place instead of taking second place. I don't know about you, but for me personally, even if I don't enjoy running, I do enjoy winning. I want to know how to win. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this idea of the last three steps, and I'm going to use it as we look at Revelation chapter 22 and kind of look at how to finish out 2014 in a successful manner. So the first step we're going to look at, or we're going to look at number one, a review. We're going to look at kind of looking back at what God has done. Revelation chapter 22 verses 6 and 7 says this, The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. One of the major mistakes that we make when we begin to interpret the Bible is we look at what it means to us instead of looking what the Bible meant to the original audience, to them in the then and there. When John received his revelation from God, he was at the time being exiled to an island called Patmos. Now, John wasn't the only one under persecution. In fact, most of the early church was under a persecution at that time. So as John begins to write down what he sees, these, these amazing visions of what God is doing and what God is revealing to him, John is giving hope to those people around him. So he's telling them all of the visions up to this point, everything up to Revelation chapter 22, he's, he's talking to them and he's saying, everything that I've shown you up to this point is to tell you this, that Jesus is coming back. The one who promised us a future is coming back for us. The angel appears and he gives John these, these awesome, awesome visions. And he, John now kind of has to uh, begin to write down what he's seen, begin to record everything that he's seen, whether it's the streets of gold or the, the visions of the beasts and how everything's going to end up for the church. The best way I can think to describe this is when I was in college, I lived uh, in a dormitory with a bunch of other young men. We'd have these awesome prayer services at our college. And after the prayer services, you know, sometimes people would receive visions or dreams, and we would talk afterwards, and we'd say, what did you see? And they would just stare blankly at you because there was no way they could relate what they had just seen. There was no way they could take what God had given them and begin to share it in any meaningful way. How can I share what God has shared with me? It's almost impossible. How can I share what He has shown me it's so glorious and so, so full of grandeur. I, I can only imagine what John must have felt like when, when the angel of the Lord, when Jesus began to reveal things to him that were so powerful and hard for him to understand. And now the angel tells him these words are trustworthy and true. In other words, you have to get them recorded. So the first step tells us that we must review what God has already done for us. In 2014, it's important for us to remember that we had a, a good beginning, we had a good middle, but what really matters is the ending. How are you going to end the year? We talked on December 29th about what God is speaking to you. What has He spoken to you this week? 
I asked a question of our audience, and, and most of us in there knew what God was saying at that moment. I said, what has God spoken to you this year? And I said, if you didn't hear anything, then you weren't listening. I pray as you're listening to this video message that you'll begin to understand that God is not silent. He's constantly speaking to you. He's constantly giving you the trajectory that he would have you to follow for this, this coming year and to finish out 2014. The question I have for you is, were you listening? In order to review what God has told you, you have had to have been listening when he told it to you. Not only do we have to review what God has shown us, but secondly, we need to remember. So the first step was to review. The second step is to remember. Revelation 22, 8 and 9 says this. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Remember. John at the time was, was, the Bible tells us in other passages that John was known as the beloved disciple. He was the one who took care of Mary, Jesus' mother, after Jesus ascended into heaven. He was the one who, who Jesus loved and kind of, kind of a best friend mentality almost. Traditionally, tradition tells us through history that John was the only disciple that wasn't martyred for his belief. He was the only one that wasn't killed for his belief in Jesus. So now John is exiled to the island of Patmos. He's received all of these um, awesome visions and, and grand ideas of what the end of time is going to be. And now John, at the end of the vision, the angel stands before him, and John does the logical thing. He falls down to worship the one who has revealed everything to him. I don't know about you, but that would be what I would do if an angel had appeared out of heaven, had revealed something that was going to change the world, and then he finishes, and my initial reaction would be to worship him. But the angel does something awesome. He declares not to worship him, the angel. Instead, in verse 9, he says, worship God. In other words, the angel reveals that the proper focus is not on the grand things that God's revealing to us. Instead, the proper focus is on God himself. When I was younger, I played baseball and t-ball, and my dad would, he had a, a saying that I'm sure your parents always said to you as well. When I would get a little bit distracted, he would look at me and he would say, keep your eye on the ball. You can't catch a fly ball, keep your eye on the ball. You can't swing and hit it off the tee, keep your eye on the ball. He said it to me so often that it became a joke in my family, and, and I would take that ball, and sometimes I would balance it on my eye, and I would say, look, I'm keeping my eye on the ball. That wasn't exactly what he meant. You see, as the ball would come in from the pitcher and you would begin to swing the bat, if you looked out into where you were hitting, you would miss the ball. Why? Because your focus was lost. You had to focus on the bat connecting with the ball at just the right moment and just the right time. Keep your eye on the ball. I can imagine that's what the angel was saying to John in that moment. He was saying, yes, I've revealed all this stuff to you, and that's awesome, and now I've shown you the future, but worship God. Keep your eye on the ball. See, in order to finish out 2014 strong, we must remember what holds our focus. Our focus. We must remember that God is not happy to be one of the things that we worship. He must be the only thing. See, competition within our worship it has a special word. It's called idolatry. Anything that gets before God or anything that even competes with God in our worship is an idol in our lives. So perhaps we need to remember who our focus should be and look toward Him and turn away from our idols. We must remember that God is the only one that deserves to be worshipped. He is the only one that has loved us enough to send His Son to die for us. So the first step that we must remember as we finish out the New Year is to review, to look back, to hear what God has said. Second, we must remember that God is our focus. 
And lastly, third step, and this actually has, has two steps associated with it. But the third step for a successful closing out of the year and a beginning of the of, uh, next year is this. The third step is to repeat, or I'm sorry, repent and rejoice. Revelation 22, verses 10 and 11 says this. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of the scroll because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to be right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. John was re- It was revealed to John that Jesus was coming back soon. We find ourselves now 2,000 years later saying, what is soon? How soon is Jesus going to come back? Do we really have a hope that he's going to return for us? I would say that the angel's words still ring true today as we close out 2014 and go into 2015. The end is near. Have hope in God. He says, let the holy person continue to be holy. I pray that as you look back on 2014, you would say, I was a holy person. Perhaps you look back and you say, you know what? I wasn't that great. Maybe I've fallen in the camp of the vile person. Let the vile person keep being vile. But you know what? Maybe for you, that's not good enough. Maybe for you, it's not good enough to be called vile and to stay vile. Maybe for you, God has something else for you today. And I would challenge you to repent from those things that have gotten in the way. Repent from those things that have taken you away from God. And when you repent, you can rejoice. You can rejoice because God has set you free. He has done something amazing. He has done something powerful. He has loosed all of heaven, and they are rejoicing together with you because you have found Christ today i'd like to ask you what's inside of you is it light or is it darkness would john as he looked at your life be able to say let the holy person remain holy or would he be forced to say let the vile person remain vile perhaps this morning you're wondering about where you are You don't know what God has spoken to you. You're wondering, do do I really matter to God? As I finish out 2014, am I just destined to repeat my same mistakes in 2015? I told you about my PE teacher when I was a boy. He would always talk to us about those last three steps. Head down, head out, lean into the finish line. I'd like to challenge you to do that. As a boy, I never won those races, those 100-yard dashes. I wasn't the fastest kid in my class. But there were two kids. There was Michael and there was Ash, and they would race against each other every time. And it seemed like whichever one of them finished well won the award. They got the blue ribbon. It didn't matter who took off better. It didn't matter who ran faster in the middle. It was all about the finish. So today I would like to challenge you, finish out 2014 well. Finish it in a strong manner. Finish it in such a way that you can say, God has spoken to me, and now the holy person will remain holy. Let me pray for you this morning. God, I pray for anyone who's watching our video cast today. God, I pray that you would give them a clear picture of you and know that you are guiding them out of 2014 and into 2015. God, help them to follow those last three steps well, to review what you have already done, to remember who you are, and lastly, to repent and rejoice for what you're doing today. God, I pray if there is any sin in their lives, they would ask you to remove it. And now, God, we rejoice together because you have chosen to set us free. Thank you for your son, and thank you for a vision of our future. In Jesus' name, amen.